responsibility to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems and to solve them together. We light the green candle today on the right. And as always, we are honored to have with us our very special guest once again during this Kwanzaa season, the 56th anniversary of Kwanzaa. He is the creator of the cultural, the Pan-African cultural holiday, of course, of Kwanzaa and the seven principles, which in the Kiswahili we say is the Nguza Saba. We recognize each principle over the seven days. He's the author of the authoritative text titled Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community, and culture. We also know and love him as professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at California State University in Long Beach. His students are blessed to study under his feet. He is chair of the organization US and the National Association of Kawaida Organizations and executive director of the African American Cultural Center and the Kawaida Institute of Pan African Studies and co chair of the Black Community Clergy, Clergy and Labor. Alliance, the BCCLA. He's author of numerous scholarly articles and books, including the following Essays on Struggle, Position and Analysis, Kawaida, and Questions of Life and Struggle, Ma'at, The Moral Ideal in Ancient Egypt, a Study in Classical African Ethics, The Introduction to Black Studies, and now in its fourth edition, The Husea, The Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Egypt. Odu Ifa, The Ethical Teachings, and he is currently working on yet another publication, a major work on the social and ethical philosophy of Malcolm X, entitled The Liberation Ethics of Malcolm X, Critical Consciousness, Moral Grounding, and Transformative Struggle. He's a recipient of numerous awards for scholarship, leadership, and service, including the Paul Robeson Zora Neale Hurston Award, for scholarly work of African world culture and the CLR James Award for outstanding publication of scholarly works that advance the discipline of Africana and black studies and the presidential award for exemplary service and outstanding contribution to the field of black studies, all bestowed upon him by the National Council for Black Studies. Yeah, we're still fighting to keep black studies alive, folks, and he's doing it. And he's also the subject of the book by Dr. Malefi Asante entitled Maulana Karinga, an intellectual portrait. So we welcome once again on this third day of Kwanzaa, Ujima, the creator of Kwanzaa, Dr. Maulana Karinga. And we greet him and all of you with the words in Kiswahili, which mean, what's the news? And the response is the principle. So we greet each other today. We say Habarigani and we respond with Ujima. Dr. Karinga, once again, Habarigani. Ujima, Fofinikwano. My concern is for you. I'm fine, my concern is for you. And I wanted to say, as you talked about this, Reverend Maximilian, about the lighting of the candle, and there's a, a logic to that, and I should say that the first candle is the black candle because people are first, and without the people, what's the need of discussing this? So first, the people, always centered. Second, to the left, we light the candle or the red candle, but that represents struggle. And then on the right, going the next year, Always close, we do the green, because that's the future and hope that comes from that struggle. So first the people, then the struggle, then the future, forged in struggle, and the hope that comes out of that. So keep that in mind. So if you light them wrong and you start all the way at the end, you miss the lesson. The people are first, you are first, right? And the struggle is central to your life and to your future. And then the green shows you that's hope in struggle that we win when we fight, and that we are every day victorious when we refuse to be defeated. That's so important for us to understand that. And we must do it with Ujima, the third principle, with Umoja, with Kujichagalia, and with Ujima, and the rest of the principle. So the third principle is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. And it calls on us, the text says, to build and maintain our community together and to make our brothers and sisters' problems our problem, and to solve them together. This principle teaches us that we're responsible to and for each other. I said responsible to and for each other, and that we must build the good world we all want and deserve to live in and leave as a legacy worthy of the name in history African. And it teaches us that it is a work, a collective work. 
which requires a profound and persistent ethical sensitivity to the needs and aspirations of others. Therefore, the problems of poverty, of homelessness, of gentrification, of less than health care that we need, of unemployment, of police violence, of early death and racialized justice, the problem of the pandemics, not only of COVID, but of continuing HIV AIDS and all the illnesses we face as a people and the support of its survivors, that's our issue, and the care for the families of the victims. All of this must not be approached simply as an isolated, personal, or even family issue, but as a community issue. It's not a personalized tragedy and unfortunate problems of others. Rather, these must be understood and engaged as problems which we are all affected by and responsible for solving collective work and responsibility. Likewise, the sovereignty struggle of the peoples of the world, especially, for example, when we think of Haiti or Sudan or Palestine or Afghanistan or Australia or Venezuela or Bolivia or Yemen and other parts of the world, and so our concern. We want justice in the world. We want freedom in the world. We want good in the world. And we must never think of ourselves as the dominant society used to always define it. Geno Denison, we are world historical people. As I've said before so many times, we have two words in Swahili for human, for, for people. One is human being, Watu, and the other is Walimwengu, world being. So we're not just human being, we're world being. And our responsibility is for the world. In fact, we're a world historical community as African people all over the world. And people celebrate Kwanzaa all over the world. And this message is good for them all over the world in all the places I've mentioned. And some I don't even mention. But on every continent, there Africans are celebrating Kwanzaa and meditating on the awesome responsibility of being African in the world. We live in a world and web of interdependence, as I've said before. And the issues of freedom, justice, self-determination, and peace or critical issues for all of us everywhere in the world. For as Haji Malcolm taught us, these liberation struggles are linked with our own and are the motive force of human history. Moreover, these struggles raise critical issues for us and the world which we must deal with, i.e. the right of freedom and self-determination that we just talked about, and the wrongness of suppression and oppression, the right and responsibility of resistance, and the wrongness of invasion, occupation, and unjust war. The right of the resources that people have for their own land. They have a right to their own resources of their own land. And we had to talk about the wrongness of international robbery of these resources by corporations or conquering countries. Thus, it's important for us, if we're going to practice collective working responsibility for ourselves and for the world, it is important for us to accept that our concerns for the oppressed must be expressed in a sustained practice. We can't just be concerned in the abstract. It must be expressed in a sustained practice to free them. We must see that our anger at injustice must be reflected in our active resistance to it. And our preference for the poor must be linked to a practice which alleviates their poverty and points toward an end to it. This ultimately means that we must take up and continue the historic and ongoing struggle for good in the world, the struggle for freedom and justice, the struggle for power of the people over their destiny and daily lives, and for peace in the world, for security in their person, and for living a good life we all want and deserve. Thus, we must enter the corporate temples and political courtyard of the rich and powerful and radically renounce and confront them. We must resist their bloodthirsty gods of wealth and war, Turn over the tables around which they design to death, disposition, and imprisonment, imprisonment of whole nations, and place a new life affirming, life enhancing, common ground agenda before this country and the world. As Nana, Dr. Mary McLeod, with doom, our honored ancestors taught, our task is to remake the world. It is nothing less than this. And that must be with collective work and responsibility and righteous and religious struggle. 
Ashe and Amen. Dr. Kareem will get us doing something, y'all. He's firing us up this Kwanzaa, and we so appreciate him for doing that. Asante Sana. We'll be back tomorrow to celebrate Kwanzaa every day, all this week, with the creator and founder, Dr. Karinga. We're so blessed to have him. Asante, Dr. Karinga. Thank you so much.